often than not, you hear stories of iconic celebrities and legends who leave an undying legacy behind and are remembered fondly for their amazing work while they were alive. One of such iconic celebrities is Linda Crystal, one of the finest actresses to ever appear on the silver screen. She is known for her eye-catching beauty and incredible acting, especially in Western movies, where she mostly played the role of a rancher. She was so good that the other actresses who were compared to her almost never made the cut. In this video, we are going to be looking at her interesting life and how she came from Argentina to dominate the American film industry and have one of the most rewarding careers in the history of Hollywood. If you have not subscribed to our channel, you are not doing something right. Hit that subscribe button now and become a part of this amazing community. All set? Let's go! Early Life Born on the 23rd of February 1931, Marta Victoria Moya Pego Burgess was the daughter of Antonio Moya, who was of French origin, and Rosario P., who was of Spanish descent. Her father worked as a publisher, while her mother was a homemaker, who stayed home to look after she and her other three siblings, including an older brother. She was born in Buenos Aires, Argentina, but had to move to Uruguay, or rather flee, after her father got involved in some political issues involving a criminal gang that were after his life. They settled in Montevideo, Uruguay, but at the age of 13, both her parents died. They were both found dead in their car and the cause of death was carbon monoxide poisoning. Their death was ruled as a probable suicide, as there was no evidence of foul play. She was raised mainly by extended family and showed a great passion for acting and singing as a child. She attended the Conservatory of Franklin in Uruguay, where she studied voice and piano. Career Although she always wanted to get into the show business, she thought it was impossible since she didn't have any connections to Hollywood and absolutely no way to get into the film industry. So she chose to settle for the religious life instead and began to make plans to enter the covent, as several of her aunties were also nuns. But she was hit by a stroke of luck that changed her life. She was vacationing off the coast of Mexico with her brother when she caught the attention of Miguel Almen Velasco who was enchanted by her beauty. She was of mixed heritage, and she got the best of both worlds, which contributed to her incredibly enchanting beauty that caught the attention of any and everyone, and Velasco wasn't exempted. What made Velasco's case different was that aside from being a film producer and director, he was the son of the ruling president at the time and could pretty much make anything happen. So, he offered her a one-way ticket to Hollywood by way of a long-term contract that was too good for her to refuse. She changed her name to Linda Crystal and was groomed thoroughly for the screens. Her first role was an uncredited role in the Mexican drama film When the Fog Lifts, directed by Emilio Fernandez in 1952. It was a highly successful movie with ratings that were off the chart. Critics praised the production, and it was nominated for three Ariel Awards, but Linda's role was uncredited, so she didn't get any recognition from the success of the film. The following year, she played the role of Julia in Forbidden Fruit, but it wasn't half as successful as her previous movie was. Her first major role was the role of Rosita in the moderately successful Mexican film The Spot of the Family. Her performance in this role gave her career the necessary boost it needed, and she was soon considered as one of the rising stars in the Mexican film industry. She went on to star in several Argentinian and Mexican films and became a local celebrity, popular in all of South America. She decided to make a move to Hollywood and started learning English in preparation for her big break into Hollywood. She was already fluent in Spanish, Italian, and French. English was only a fourth language. In 1956, she made her debut in the American film industry with a small role as Margarita in the Western film Comanche. She appeared alongside some of the greats like Dana Andrews and Kent Smith, and her performance in this film was absolutely glorious. Two years later, after several roles, she won the Golden Globe Award for New Star of the Year for her performance in The Perfect Furlough, where she played the role of Sandra Roca. Her incredible beauty and perfect physique came in handy in the role, as her character was supposed to be an Argentine bombshell. Her career came to a brief stop when she got into a dispute with her employers for non-payment of wages followed by a car accident. But three years later, she was back with a bang and featured in a couple of back-to-back -back Western movies where she re-established herself as an amazing actress. She went on and featured in a few other movies that weren't Western and caught the attention of some big names like John Wayne who helped her secure better roles in films like Alamo in 1960 and Two Road Together in 1961. 
She also featured in a few television episodes and was beginning to make a name for herself when she took a break from acting in 1964 to take care of her children. She came out of retirement in 1967 when she was offered a role as a regular on the NBC series The High Chaparral. During the audition, she found the script to be too boring and improvised with her own lines, totally changing the character to what she thought it should be. Quite audacious of her. She did not later reveal in an interview that she knew the producers were looking for a heroine with fire and spunk. And she did bring the heat all right, as she earned two Primetime Emmy nominations and bagged her second Golden Globe Award for Best Actress in a TV Drama. Throughout the series, she was allowed to make up her own lines for the character. Her career lasted over 30 years, in which she appeared in more than 20 films. Her final appearance was in the daytime soap General Hospital in 1963, where she played the role of the mistress of a mob boss. Personal Life Crystal was married twice, first to Robert Champion in April 1958. Champion was a businessman based in California, and they divorced in December 1959. The following year, she married Yale Wexler, a former actor who later started investing in real estate. Together they had two children and divorced in December 1966. Picking a leaf from his book, she worked for a while as a realtor and even managed her own import and export business while investing in other businesses. She lived out the rest of her life, enjoying her fortune and shuffling between her residence in Beverly Hills, Palm Springs, and Buenos Aires. On June 27, 2020, she passed away in her sleep in her Beverly Hills mansion at the age of 89. We hope you enjoyed that story from us. Do like the video and stay subscribed to our channel so you don't miss any more amazing content like this from us. See you next time.